Hey guys, Solid here, hope you're all doing well. Have you ever been in this scenario? You've just scored five out of five lattes on the Muppet scale. The only thing hurting more than your butt from the hard seat is your pride. And you're wondering why someone had never explained this to you and why you hadn't figured it out for yourself before. Uh -oh. So in this video, we're gonna go through all those uncommon tips and tricks that often don't get mentioned. So let's roll that intro and get straight into it. The first tip for you is one that seems very simple but actually has a lot behind it and that's look ahead. Seems obvious, we all get this drilled into us when we're first getting our license, so why am I bringing it up if it's obvious? Well, I don't think it's highlighted enough for how important it is when you're off-road riding. Now, this doesn't really come into effect too much when you're doing gravel roads and pretty easy off-road. But when the going gets really tough, and I'll use an example here, when I first did deep, deep sand, uh, it really came into effect. We started on a wide open area in deep sand and I was going quite well. I was getting very confident and felt really good about myself. But then we hit some tight trails in deep sand and suddenly your vision is narrowed and it got really difficult really quickly. And I started to really stress out. I lost that uh, mental agility and I started to look right down in front of my tire. And sure enough, I crashed four times in the space of about a minute because I was just hyper-focusing right down at my front wheel, stressing out about the next crash and I kept falling over. Now lucky for me, a guy pulled up next to me who'd been around Australia, he was a real seasoned rider, and he told me about how important it is in the most difficult terrain to look ahead more than ever. So this was quite a challenge as you're really worried about crashing. So I was actually riding along, looking ahead, but I actually repeated it to myself out loud to maintain that discipline because a lot of people don't talk about the mental side of riding. A lot of it really is your mental awareness and your ability to do things that don't seem intuitive. A lot of off-road riding on the mental side is counterintuitive. It's all about belief and sticking to the fundamentals. So I was actually speaking out loud to myself, look ahead, look ahead, look ahead. And I barely crashed the rest of the day just from that advice. So it really saved my butt. So think about that when the terrain gets really hard and you start falling off and dropping the bike. Are you looking ahead enough? Are you keeping your mental fortitude and not letting it all fall apart because you're stressing out too much? It is counterintuitive to look ahead when the obstacles are so difficult, but I can promise you if you look at that obstacle, take it in, recognize it, and then start focusing on the next one, it will really do you a world of good. So the second tip I've got for you is change your valve covers or your valve caps to something bright and colorful, an anodized little cap. Reason being is I've made this mistake a thousand times. I take my valve caps off to air down or air up my tires out in the bush. I put it down, go to chat to a mate while I'm doing the job, look back and the bloody things disappeared. They look like everything else on the ground once you're out in the bush or the forest. So get yourself something nice and bright that you can spot if you lose it and it will just save you a whole pile of hassle and some money in the future. And it also has the added benefit of looking slightly nicer than the crappy black caps that come with a stock bikes. My third tip is impact shorts. Now if you're not familiar with what those are, they're basically shorts that you wear under your riding pants that have impact foam in the hip and leg area as well as the crutch and the butt area. Now these have two really good aspects to them. The first obviously is they offer additional protection and I can attest to how much difference they make. I hurt my hip once fairly badly without them and I've crashed in similar circumstances since having those shorts and they really have stood up to the test of time. The other great aspect to these shorts is they have a padded butt. Now, if you haven't ridden a dual sport before, you probably don't know the sphincter rupturing pain that is a dual sport seat like the DRZ behind me. They're really uncomfortable. And if you've just paid for a new bike, you've got all the new gear, and you just go to your minister of finance, whether that's your wife or your husband or your partner, and try to argue to them that you might need to spend $600 on a seat to protect your poor sensitive little tush. 
Whereas you come from the angle of impact shorts where they offer you upgraded safety protection and it really is about the safety. Uh, it might be an easier sell because they do have a padded butt which really does help and allow you to ride the stock seat for much longer without getting too uncomfortable. So it is a cheap win-win. You get more safety and comfort, great for protection, great for the butt and great for your relationship status. So the fourth thing is tire pressures. I was actually surprised how little people actually paid attention to the tire pressures when I was first starting out. A lot of people I realize don't really understand the importance of tire pressures when they're starting out off-road. First thing you should do when you get off-road is after you've celebrated that you've reached the dirt is drop your pressures to the right amount. Now the right amount depends on the person, the bike, type of wheels you've got, whether you run tubes, tubeless, cast wheels. So you will need to figure that out for yourself, but you do need to drop your pressures. Why? Because it increases your grip off-road. So different off-road scenarios will require different pressures that you can learn from forums, from videos, from your riding buddies, and from how the bike feels to you but definitely reduce your pressures. And especially for sand, if you're in deep soft sand, I would be going down to 10 PSI at least. Make sure you got rim locks, but pay attention to tire pressures. The fifth tip is get yourself a neck sock. These things are a game changer. They're so versatile. Here in Australia, they're great in the summer for protecting your neck from the sun. But also if you forget a hat when you stop for a break, you can just pull it up if you're a baldy like me or even if you got some hair, you can put it over your head as a bit of a skull cap. But more importantly, if it gets really dusty and you're not the first person in the riding group, you can pull it up over your face so you don't dive consumption halfway through the ride. I learned that one the hard way and promptly got myself a longer neck sock that I could pull up over my face. The other great thing is they also keep you warm in winter. They keep the water from trickling down off your helmet, down the back of your neck when it's raining. And on top of that, this has happened to me once or twice. When you're out camping and you're a Muppet and you forget your beanie, it can really save your shiny bald head from getting cold in the cold winter nights. So it really is a versatile thing. Now the other scenario is a funny story I've got for you. I've actually been wearing a neck sock most of my motorcycling life. And we were out on a ride when I was in super sports and with my brother and some mates, we're going on a super sport tour down south. And they were hanging shit on me for wearing a neck sock in the middle of summer saying, how can I wear that when it's so hot? And I explained to them that it was great from protecting me from wasps and bees, as well as from getting sunburn. And they just called me a bit of a girl. Well, 10 minutes out of the town, we hit a swarm of bees and they weren't laughing anymore. And the next ride, everyone had neck socks. So I highly recommend getting yourself a neck sock before you get out there in the dirt. The sixth one on the list is one Barry from Cross Training Enduros has brought up recently and I thought it was fantastic that he was putting it on the map. So I'm going to talk about it as well. And that's earplugs. I've always worn them when riding on a motorcycle. I have quite sensitive hearing and I'm really worried about hearing loss. So when you're riding a bike, the biggest damage to your hearing is wind noise. Over 70 kilometers an hour and wind noise can start to permanently damage your hearing. And it's a cumulative thing. So you don't notice it short term but your hearing progressively gets worse and worse. So it's an easy fix. Just chuck some foam earbuds in there or get some molded earplugs like I do. The ones I've got are quite good actually. They block out the really high frequency stuff that damages your ears, but it still allows me to hear the intercom, the real nice note of the motorcycle and the traffic around me when I'm on the street. So it just takes the harshness off it while still allowing me to hear everything around me. So get yourself a pair of earplugs. The next tip I've got for you is buy MX boots rather than adventure boots. Now, adventure boots are pretty decent. If you're sticking to the road 99% of the time and you find yourself doing adventure touring most of the time, they're gonna serve you well and be a pretty good level of protection. They're certainly better than any road orientated boot that you can buy. But when you compare them to an MX or enduro boot, they just do not stack up protection wise. MX boots are made for hard off-road riding. They're made for saving your leg from a bike falling on, from hitting a tree stump or serious accidents off-road. They have that rigidity to keep your 
ankles and legs safe, whereas an adventure boot is far more flexible, it has less protection. The reason people go for adventure boots, I found a lot of the time, is they have a lot more comfort and they allow a lot more dexterity, so people feel comfortable in them straight away, especially if you're not used to wearing a very restrictive boot. So when you first get MX boots and you put them on as a beginner, I had this experience, I thought I'd made a major mistake. I would have taken them back if I hadn't bothered reading the forums to go through everyone's experiences of the same thing. Those boots do break in a bit and you do get used to that feeling after about half a ride, you won't even notice it, but it does feel very cumbersome and very silly to start with. So that's why I think it keeps a lot of people away. The other part to this point is, I got a pair of MX boots for 150 bucks on sale from my local motorcycle shop. A pair of tan leather nice adventure boots would have cost me three times that price. And I was getting double, maybe triple the protection. And those MX boots I'm still using today. I bought them at the end of 2014 and they're still going strong and they were bargain basement MX boots. So I would highly encourage you not to bother with adventure boots if you're doing any large amount of dirt and serious off-road riding. The next one is a mistake I made early on and that's always carry a little bit of cash with you just in case. You never know if somewhere out in the middle of nowhere is going to have FPOS services or if the power's gonna be out and they can only run a cash system or whether you just need to pay for petrol or for a coffee from the kind person that gives you a lift with your broken down motorcycle. And I would also actually suggest that you keep it separate to your wallet, just so if you lose your wallet, you still got a little bit of money there for a just in case. So a little bit of cash on you can go a long way when you're out on an adventure ride. So the next tip is don't buy a bike you can't pick up yourself. This is a mistake that I made. I bought my first off-road bike, it was an F700 GS. Now that was a bike I could pick up. I tested it in the garage and it was something I could easily pick up. It was only about 200 and something kilos, so not a big deal. What I didn't think about is when I got off-road. Those are not the ideal situations for picking up a bike. Often you're on off camber, difficult terrain, you're already hot and exhausted from the physical exertion of riding off-road. So when it comes to picking up that 200 plus kilo bike, suddenly you're really straining yourself and it is really difficult, especially if it's the third or fourth time in the day and you're absolutely knackered. That really motivated me to get a light bike. I then moved to a WR250R and it completely revolutionized off-road riding for me. It just made it so much more endurable. More endurable. So really think about the weight of your bike when you're purchasing it. Can you pick it up in the worst case scenario for the third or fourth time in the day? The last tip I wanted to say is don't be afraid to fail. That was something on my mind and still is. It still gives me quite a lot of anxiety, especially when I'm riding with a new group, is that I wanna look like a great rider, especially with this channel. You know, I put up a lot of my rides, so a lot of people see my wins and my failures. But I learned early on not to care whether I failed or not, whether I drop, crash, look like a Muppet. It's all a learning experience and I'm still having a ball. So I learned to not care about all that crap. Just get out there, enjoy yourself and ride your own ride. Don't worry about whether you can wheelie as good as Chris Birch. Just get out there and have some fun. So that about wraps up this video, guys. If you're a seasoned rider and you've got some ideas on what you really wish people had told you when you were first getting into the sport, chuck them down in the comments section below as that will really add to the value of this video. I also wanted to thank everyone for the well wishes and excitement over the new DRZ that I've just purchased. I will be off-road soon. I'm just waiting on a few basic crash protection parts before I get out there. As you all know, I tend to drop my bike a lot, so it really does need some crash protection before I hit the dirt. The other thing is, welcome aboard to all the new subscribers. You've really been flooding in lately, so welcome to our weird little part of the internet. We've got a fantastic community here, so it's great to see it growing and getting stronger every day. And until next time, guys, don't forget to stay shiny side up, smash that like button, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.